talking about another young coach, I want to get to this, Chris. I know you got a lot of feelings regarding to this hire, but Jason Kidd, I mean, it's hard not to be mixed or split over this coaching decision. He has had coaching history in Milwaukee where he spent four seasons there and was cut loose midseason. It's also- like I wonder I wonder how Jason Kidd would look if he ever had a chance to to have a foreign generational talent on his team. I, I feel like that's an opportunity that he's just never been given before now with, oh, wait, he had and totally ruined Giannis Antetokounmpo I wouldn't for say several seasons. Giannis. I if you say- watch Giannis Antetokounmpo shoot a basketball and tell me that that, like, watch his rookie year jump shot, then watch his sophomore year jump shot, and then watch his jump shot now and tell me that Jason Kidd did not totally screw this kid. Well, I mean, he didn't I- know any better coming over, and, and uh, he thought Kidd was a great coach. It, there was a report – that he found out really quick once they replaced kid, that kid was not the great coach that he thought he was, that it was literally because he didn't know better because he was from another country that he thought kid was going to be so great because he was a great NBA point guard. Um, yeah. I, I just think the thing with the thing with kid is that he was hired by Los Angeles as an assistant. Partly right. for Associate player. head coach. I think, I think more than assistant development. So I think that he has a history in that field, like developing players. And I think you can certainly say that he helped Giannis get to the next level. You talk about the shooting, but I don't think shooting is entirely based on coaching. I mean, look at Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. I mean, Doc Rivers is a great coach, but he can't just take the ball from Ben Simmons' hands and take some free throws. I mean, there's a lot that goes into shooting outside the coaching. Now, that being said, I'm not the biggest fan of this Jason Kidd hire either. I mean, he's 183 and 190 as a head coach, nine and 15 in the playoffs. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said about does he have the experience to take this team to the next level? And if the clubhouse likes him, if he can get the guys together, that's one thing, but it's another thing just going out there and winning a game. And that takes an experienced head coach who really knows what they're doing. So I think he's worked well as an assistant, but there's nothing that I've seen from him that convinces me that he's ready for this Dallas Mavericks head coaching job. Yeah, and that's a big if, like if the players like him and if the clubhouse like rallies around him. He's not known necessarily to have great relationships with players. He's known to be pretty demanding and not necessarily to kind of cultivate a great culture. So I, I got cut loose in Brooklyn, that exact reason. Yeah. Exactly. I got a hot takeoff. Sure, Chris. Jason Kidd's best move as a coach was having one of his players spill his drink to buy him extra time to draw up a play. <laughs> <laughs> that's so embarrassing for him. Like that is a terrible, just a, that is so bad. It was smart. It, it was, was really smart. smart. But it's also like, and it is his best move as a coach to this day. You know what I mean? Like he needed extra time to draw up a play. He spilled some ice all over the ground. And that is to this date, his smartest move as an NBA head coach. Now, am I writing off the Dallas Mavericks? Absolutely not. And I have to make that clear because when you have Luka Doncic as part of your organization, you are not to be written off. However, there are a lot of teams with a lot of great talent who make it really, really far in the playoffs. And then they get beat. And why? And oh, they were, (laughs) the team was outplayed. They were outcoached, whatever it was. It's possible for a team like the Heat with a coach like Eric Spolstra to make runs in the bubble like they did when they have the consistency that comes from having a great coach. I think coaching matters a lot in the end. I think the most in the NFL coaching might matter out of, out of the major sports leagues here in America, but it's really important in all of them. And in the NBA, if, if kid is just good and not even a great coach, I think that has potential even if the Mavericks can quell some of their roster issues, like like how Cuban said they totally need to find a number two scorer because they don't have one on the roster. And everyone's like, hey, what about Kristaps? He's like, oh, well, well Kristaps is what he is. And it's like, no, you traded for him to be the number two scorer. He's not good enough for that. Now you're scrambling because you have Luka Doncic and you've put less help around him than the Hawks did around Trey Young, who's not even as good. That's not a slight against Trey Young. He just beat the crap out of my Knicks in the playoffs. He beat the crap out of the Sixers and just handed it to the Bucs in game one despite the game two loss. Like, Trey Young is balling out right now. Luka Doncic is better at basketball than him and is getting less help from his team to win now. 
I, I don't understand it. And I think that when you have a coach like Carlisle in the building and let him go for a Nike executive to run your team and for Jason Kidd to coach it, it's a sign that things may not be going exactly how you want. Um, and with Luka Doncic gearing up to sign a $200 million extension, Dallas, I'm not afraid to say it, has already blown their best shot at a championship. They've done it because when Luka Doncic is this good on his rookie deal, you have a chance to win a ring with him as your offensive engine as soon as this year. You failed to put a roster around him that was as talented as the fifth seed in the East and you're now struggling with the with the results. It's tough to feel bad for the Mavericks here. They 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 thought they could put Luca on cruise control and and head to some Western Conference Finals. And the league doesn't work like that. So you have your guy. You have faith in him. You have to do right by him, and assemble the best team around him that you can. I think, in my opinion, the hiring Jason Kidd is already a step in the wrong direction, especially. When Luka Doncic's own pick for head coach is on your team and you don't choose him. Jamal Mosley is the coach that Luka Doncic has worked one-on-one -on -one with pregame every single game since being drafted. Uh, and he was his choice for head coach and they did not hire him. This unfortunately joins a long list of black assistants being passed over for white head coaches, despite having paid their dues with that organization, David Vanterpool in Minnesota, the penultimate example with the hiring of Chris Finch. I, I think that there are a lot of things wrong here in Dallas um, that this isn't the first time that this has been said, you know, like 10 years ago when people were like, Hey, Mavericks organization might not be all that. And then like, those problems are all still there. We just haven't talked about them because they haven't been good. Now they're good again. Now they have a Luca and they're doing wrong by him. I, I mean, I, I, I can't co-sign any of this stuff from Dallas. Um, I do thank them though, for taking on those contracts for the two first round picks and for the protection on the 2023 pick that they're about to have to lift. Because if they want to trade for anyone to help Luca, the Knicks currently have them in a corner due to those pick protections. They've put themselves in a terrible spot, the Mavericks have. They're where the Bucks were last year. The Bucks got Khan into sending five first-round picks for Drew Holiday because they had to put win-now help now around Giannis. The Mavericks have inserted themselves into the same position. They will be doing something to their team this offseason, hopefully to make it better. And I think if that's your outlook, when you have a top player in the world, you're not in a great spot. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely an interesting point. It's going to be even more interesting to see what Dallas does next year with Jason Kidd at the helm.